Good morning, gentlemen. I see that you're all here. You're about to see something different. I want them terminated. Ninja Warriors, a film that will show the different kinds of ninja fighting technique. Ninja's boss. Ready to defend to the death anyone who asks for help. We knew we were on the right track. We would like to lessen the severity of the psychological transition in the trance state. They got hold of Laura. I'll go with you. No. But she's my sister. I said no. Now you listen to me. I'm getting sick and tired of... <gasps> He started off with a quite notorious uh, cheapskate film producer called Kim Yong Lim, um, who uh, owned a film company called Kinevesa International. It was later known as Silver Star Film Company. Teddy started off working for them, doing uh, their own productions, which tended to be Hong Kong co-productions. And because Mr. Lim, and Teddy Chu spoke fluent Mandarin and Cantonese. They were really good liaisons for the Hong Kong productions that were making the Kung Fu films back in the 70s, starting with Kill the Tiger, AKA Tiger Force back in 1975. That's really the first um, film production that Mr. Lim uh, got his teeth in. And Teddy Chu can usually be found in the, in the credits either as assistant director or uh, production manager. In 1983, uh, he graduated to director and he joined other Filipino directors like June Gagliardo and Cesar Gagliardo working for Silver Star as uh, a producer on these very low budget um, action films made for the international market. And Teddy Chu was cutting his teeth on some pretty serious productions like Fireback and uh, Hunter's Crossing, both with Richard Harrison. Silver Star Film Company presents Fireback. Have you seen my wife? Oh, no, I haven't. She hasn't been around for quite some time. Fireback. Fast movie. Hard hitting. Fireback. Fire back. Fire back. Directed by Teddy Page. Soon to open fire on your screen. He reportedly wasn't a great director. He wasn't very confident in his abilities and um, people like Jim Gaines would help him uh, with the scripts and also with uh, unofficial co-directing duties. Eventually, after about um, three or four years as a director, Teddy had a falling out with Mr. Lim. Him, Bugsy DeBow and Jim Gaines started to branch off on their own and would do film projects like Phantom Soldiers for uh, 
rival Chinese Filipino producers, specifically the Monteverde family, Regal Films, JPM Productions. Uh, that was a big no-no as far as Mr. Lim was concerned. Eventually they forgave him and, and he kept working into the um, early 90s for Mr. Lim, but he was also working for Regal, um, making uh, films like Impactita, um, horror film uh, in the early 90s for the Tagalog market. Was assistant director on a couple of Joe D'Amato films like Labyrinth of Passion and some of the more hardcore ones. Uh, when Joe D'Amato came to Manila around 93. And of course he um, also went to work for another Chinese film producer, uh, David Hung, uh, and his company Davian International in the late 80s, early 90s. And they more or less picked up the slack where Kinevesa and Silver Star had, had uh, slackened off. Teddy Chu went by many names. Teddy Page we know, but he also used the pseudonyms of Teddy Hemingway, Irvin Johnson, John Lloyd, uh, oh, sorry, I have to get that. Hello? The Ninja Empire is evil. I have to reform the Ninja Empire. No, 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 Richard, Richard, we're not doing Godfrey Ho today, we're doing Teddy Page. Go to hell! As well as Richard Harrison, there were many other expats and recurring faces who starred in Teddy's films. Most frequently, you will notice Romano Christoph and Jim Gaines. Mike Monty, Nick Nicholson, Bruce Barron, Max Thayer, Mike Cohen, Jim Moss, Robert Marius, Corin Sperry, Ned Harani, and Ken Watanabe. Also, singular appearances by Flash Gordon himself, Sam Jones, and Walking Tall Sheriff Bo Svensson. Plenty of action stars and martial artists show their skills in Teddy Page's films, including Ron Marcini, Gary Daniels, Karen Shepard, Dale Apollo Cook, Sean Donahue and Lauren Avedon. Teddy can even be seen on occasion making a cameo in his own films. And so the first film that Teddy Page or Teddy Chu filmed for Silver Star Film Company in 1983 was Fireback. Starring Richard Harrison, that's not Richard Harrison there on the front. That looks a bit more like Rom Kristov. On my uh, custom DVD that looks more like Richard Harrison to me. Richard Harrison is uh, leading the film as a man who is kidnapped by the Viet Cong. When he finally is released he discovers that his wife has been kidnapped and then ultimately murdered. He goes on a revenge killing spree. Uh, this gun does make an appearance. Mike Monty shows up. He's got a pretty impressive blonde and golden hair dye. I'm not sure what's going on there. Speaking of gold, there's a man with a golden arm who's one of the bad guys. There's a great fight with this guy. And also it shows um, Richard Harrison trying out his ninja costume uh, a couple of years before he was doing so for Godfrey Ho. This is a multi-caliber gun with a built-in radio, automatic rifle, and this is a grenade launcher. A bazooka. And this is a mini missile. The next film that Teddy shot for Silver Star was Hunter's Crossing. I don't have an original of that. This is my custom DVD again. Uh, this one does supposedly star Richard Harrison as the multi-millionaire, but he's only in it for about a minute at the start. He gets a phone call from kidnappers about his, I think it was his father and his sister that get kidnapped. And long story short, he unleashes uh, Bruce Barron, who is the real lead of the film, into uh, forming a team to go and rescue them. The middle of the film is kind of strange and it involves Bruce Barron and his team going on a robbery and a heist and I don't really understand what that was all about. But uh, the last 20 minutes of this one are exploding huts in Central. They are exploding left, right and centre. There is a ridiculously funny scene with uh, Jim Gaines sacrificing himself by throwing himself onto a grenade that clearly is not going to blow up anywhere near the rest of the team. He blows up in a massive, massive pile of human debris. Then Bruce Barron takes revenge by shooting one of the bad guys six times after he's dead and then kicking him. Silver Star Film Company presents the story of four men who dared across the bridge of no return. Hunter's Crossing.
Hunter's Crossing. Men who are wanted for murder and robbery, but fight for honor and glory. Hunter's Crossing. Directed by Teddy Page. Ninja's Force with Romana Kristoff. This one's from 1984. A Japanese scientist has developed a way to control people and turn them into zombies. Mike Monty hires Romano Kristoff, the half American, half Japanese ninja, to find this guy and uh, stop the zombies. By daytime he's investigating, but by nighttime he's either a ninja or he's in the master of disguise. Some hilarious scenes in this one. He dresses as a middle-aged woman from the 1960s, complete with the oversized glasses and a blonde wig. He tries to convince people that he is a fisherman with a giant beard. Hilarious scene where his hat blows off. It's got a decapitation. It's got everything you want in this kind of film. Ninja's Force. Uh, holy shit. Who are you working for? Uh, huh? Who are you working for? Uh, I don't know who the boss is. Oh, only know who hired us. They Miller. Miller who? Uh, Henry. Henry Miller. So, where is he? Huh? Where can I find him? At Fisher's. In From 1984, Heroes for Hire, starring Bruce Barron, on Japanese VHS and the South African DVD that's pretty hard to find. Mike Monty is kidnapped from a party for what he knows about a secret mind-controlling device held on a microfilm. Bruce Barron is hired along with two other heroes for hire, one named Ninja and one named Cactus. From here on out it's all missile shooting, mini crossbows and grenade firing slingshots along with ninjas that can clone themselves and a whole lot of double crossing. Heroes for hire. Richard Harrison is judge, jury, and executioner in Blood Debts, German DVD, and the Japanese VHS. After witnessing his daughter murdered by thugs, Richard Harrison, as Mark Collins, finds those responsible and executes them. This is not enough as he takes on the role as vigilante in the town, taking out other bad guys until he upsets the local drug boss. Blood Debts features possibly the greatest ending shot of any movie you will ever see. Blood Debts. Silver Star Film Company presents a film that will show the world what action really is. Blood Debts. Blood Debts. No, don't shoot him. Blood Debts, the story of a one-man war against criminals that turned the streets into a jungle and men into beasts. <laughs> Oh, why can't you just leave everything to the cops, Mark? They have no rights. Blood debts. Double Edge on German DVD on this second disc here, as well as the Japanese VHS. Rom Kristoff as Quinn, the grizzled cop who saw his parents murdered, plays by his own rules, but even he cannot take down a drug kingpin. At the same time, a ninja dressed in black, not a Garfield phone ninja, has started cleaning up the town in the places that Quinn cannot. Best mix of 80s Stallone, with Quinn playing a cobra-like cop, 
going through a Rocky-like montage and there's Rambo-like jungle booby traps. Double edge. Who in the hell do you think you are? The judge, the jury, and the executioner? In Dead Ringer, Max Thayer plays Frank, a man caught in a case of mistaken identity when arriving in town being chased and shot at by people insisting that his name is Dave. Aided by the real Dave's friend, Charlie, played by Mike Monty, Mike tries to get to the bottom of this mistake while avoiding the henchman of Godfather, played by Mike Cohen, and having it off with his granddaughter. The real Dave shows up in the final act and we are treated to a double act of two Max Thayers and a laser cannon picking off the bad guys. Dead ringer. In 1985's Ninja Warriors is best summed up by the IMDb synopsis, document stealing killer ninjas are up to no good. A more robust, secure record management system could have discouraged such behaviour. Police Captain Mike Monty doesn't believe that ninjas are responsible, so Sergeant Paul Vance recruits none other than Ron Marcini, also a ninja, to get the documents back from the forces of Ninja Ken Watanabe and his henchman, played by Rom Kristoff. It all culminates with a well-shot battle between Ron and Ken in the desert mountains. Ninja warriors, they were trained in the ancient art of ninjutsu. Masters of deception. A secret society out to control the world. Ninja Warrior, a Silver Star Film Company presentation, directed by John Lloyd. 1985 brings us Blackfire, Japanese VHS, as well as South African DVD. Romana Kristoff plays a sergeant who was injured by a grenade while fighting the Viet Cong along with Jim Gaines. In hospital, he dreams that he is a ninja. In the real world, these ninja flashbacks earn him the name Blackfire. When Christoph and Gaines are moved to a training camp to teach recruits, Christoph is framed for the murder of his girlfriend. He escapes and along with Gaines declares his own personal war. This has a more involved plot than some of Teddy Page's earlier films, with a wild hutsploitation opening and some glorious Rambo action to finish it off. Blackfire.
1936 we got War Without End on Japanese VHS, also known as To Hell With Heroes on South African DVD. An Air Force Captain pilot played by Robert Marius, along with Lieutenant Jim Gaines, become prisoners in the Cambodian jungle after their experimental plane known as the Wild Weasel crash lands. Captured by Khmer Rouge soldiers, the two escape with the help of one of the local women and soon uncover a KGB plot. Mike Monty has a small role as the Doctor with Nick Nicholson as the bearded KGB and Paul Vance as the double-crossing colonel. War Without End plays out similar to Bruno Mattia's Strike Commando with just as many exploding huts and machine guns akimbo of faceless enemy soldiers. Soldiers is the first film Teddy directed for Regal Films and one of his most revered. Opening with a total massacre of a Vietnamese village by gas mask wearing soldiers, the stage is set early on for the high body count and military action featured in this film. Lieutenant Michael Custer of the Special Forces, played by Corin Sperry, discovers the bodies and embarks on a mission with his team to uncover the phantom soldiers who leave decorated skulls at their battles. Sergeant Jim Gaines spots one briefly in the forest and goes full predator on him with the rest of his platoon hitting nothing. Mike Monty and Max Thayer take roles in this film as the top brass, with Max as Colonel Daniel Custer, brother to Lieutenant Michael, who goes to Nam to mount a rescue. It seems like every stuntman in the Philippines is shot to pieces in this movie, with the defense campaign set at the halfway point being one of the most explosive ever put to film regardless of budget. Multiple helicopters all armed and in flight, no trickery here, dozens of buildings blowing up, Max Thayer swanning in Rambo style with his massive machine gun. If you only watch one Teddy Page film, make it Phantom Soldiers. But please, don't watch this South African DVD. It's got some strange cuts, some swearings dropped out of it, and it's actually not the full length cut of the film. Watch the Japanese VHS, but whatever you do, watch Phantom Soldiers. It's 1987's Movie in Action on German DVD known as Wartime. Director Bo Svensson and producer Mike Monty are filming a war film in Thailand when their leading lady is kidnapped by Khmer Rouge military. Svensson, with a walking cane, orders his crew, including Jim Gaines the sound man and Robert Marius the effects man, on a mission to Cambodia to rescue her. With moments of levity amongst the usual jungle explosions, including a gag with a remote control car and scaring old men wearing monster makeup, Wartime feels very different to Teddy's other jungle actioners. The untrained film crew having to quickly become soldiers is an interesting angle, though Bo Svensson spending the film dining with Mike Monty and not shooting the gun on the cover was a bit of a disappointment. Wartime, aka movie in action. Cambodia. Why not? More bad news? I just sent your movie crew into Cambodia. 
Kovrachka suit. Yeah! Go! 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 Nineteen eighty eight's Jungle Rats on Japanese VHS. General Mike Monty is with his unit on maneuvers in Vietnam when attacked by a Viet Cong and captured. Lieutenant Ron Christoph and Sergeant Jim Gaines are tasked to rescue him on a mission codenamed Jungle Rats. This is a straightforward bullet heavy slog against the Viet Cong with grenades, trip wires and landmines thrown in for good measure before moving from rough terrain into underground tunnels. Sergeant Gaines shows a lot of attitude in this one, spouting racist comments and constantly getting pulled into line by Lieutenant Christoph. He even attempts to rape a captured prisoner, which is pixelated on this tape. It culminates in the usual explosive finale with enough exploding hearts to satisfy. Jungle Rats. Teddy's first film for Solar Films is Final Reprisal, shown here on German DVD, as well as Japanese VHS. Lieutenant Gary Daniels and, as usual, Sergeant Jim Gaines are tasked with a mission to take out the top brass at a secret meeting in Vietnam. The mission fails when the meeting was moved at the last minute, and when pinned down trying to escape, the team kidnapped the daughter of Tran Van Phu. The daughter is found executed, and Sergeant Gaines is captured as a prisoner of war. Five years later in Thailand, Daniels, now a retired family man, receives a visit from the thought-dead Sergeant Gaines, but also from a gang of armed motorcycle riders who then murder his own wife and child. Daniels is determined to get revenge, and along with Gaines, seeks out justice. This is the first starring role for Gary Daniels, and the film plays more like a vehicle for his talents rather than a standard Teddy Page jungle actioner, with plenty of early kickboxing showcased. We still get a suitable amount of exploding hearts to remind us who was directing, plenty of plot twists and turns with double crossing and torture before finally leading us to the revenge that Daniel so desires. Final reprisal. Vietnam. The nightmare was raging. And David Callahan was in it in a hellfire cauldron of death. Four years later, David Callahan's vacation turns into another blood night. <coughs> David Callahan swears in the code of honor Vengeance was his. For David Callahan, it was kill or be killed. He knew he had to fight the final reprisal. 1988's Blazing Guns. The people of Costa Brava have had enough of the leadership of President Mendoza. A rebel contingent fight his army, the general populace protest his actions, but the Americans think that he's doing a great job. That is except for Max Draven, played by Corin Sperry, special advisor to the US ambassador, who has a hunch that not all is as it seems. Draven is chased, beaten up and shot at when he meets an American journalist who is of the belief that the president is faking rebel attacks with his own men to gain sympathy and support from the Americans. 
This appears to be one of the most rare Teddy Page films, at least of the English speaking ones, not existing on IMDb until I added it after watching this tape. As for the film, Costa Brava is a nice change to Vietnam, and President Mendoza is a hilarious villain with an outrageous accent. Corrin Sperry is great in this, and very red brown at times. I can't think of many films with frisbee mines and machine gun mountain hang gliders. The planet hijack, man. What airline? It's not really definite yet. They announced it at the last minute. How about El Tiburon? Is he in? Yes, but he's out of desperation. Still very reluctant about the whole thing. I'll call you back when the airline is known and give you the rest of the information. Be careful and good luck. You too. Silver Star we have Trigon Fire. A nuclear bomb called the Trigon is so dangerous that it was split into three parts and dispersed by its creators. Libyan ninjas steal all three parts and sell them to an Irish terrorist with a terrible accent protected by a corrupt general Mike Monty. David Light plays a bounty hunter sent to capture the terrorist, however Dr. Sam Jones gets mistaken as him, is attacked, ambushed and his family murdered. After a brief weapons lesson from his undercover taxi driver, Sam Jones is soon mopping up swarms of bad guys, the real bounty hunter David Light not far behind him. Adding Sam Jones' then real-life wife Blair Valk into the mix as a Russian agent, Trigon Fire delivers plenty of action, double-crossing and a ridiculous final credits text scroll. <laughs> off the 1990s with Lethal Killing Machine, also called Crime Stopper. This film can simply be described as Rom Kristoff getting captured by bad guys and Jim Gaines going undercover to rescue him. At least that's about all I can work out that's going on in this film, as this is Teddy Page's equivalent of a Godfrey Ho cut and paste film. Assembling the action scenes from Black Fire, Double Edge and Movie and Action, together with some new wraparound footage, certainly makes for a very explosive action film but not a very coherent one. I think a first time Teddy Page viewer would enjoy this movie more if they had not seen the films in which it was comprised of first. There's the police! We've got you surrounded! I shouldn't have come here. I thought we were safe. Dumb shit! Let's go! Let's go!
You can't outrun old Smithy. Now drop it. Against the wall. Come on. You too. Come on, punk. Against the wall. Against that wall. Ah, so you're the big fish, huh? Come on. Blood Hand, starring Sean Donahue, is a change from the usual jungle slog to a riff on the small town vigilante revenge film. When four drunk kickboxing champions accidentally kill a store owner and their escape car then breaks down, they stop in at one of their ex-wives for repairs. Another fight ensues and both her and her new husband are killed, the champions fleeing but forgetting their prize medallion. Steve Callahan, that's Sean Donahue, arrives to find his mother murdered and vows revenge. This is a great example of early 90s low budget kickboxing action, with Sean getting plenty of chances to show off his kickboxing skills, but not so much his acting ones. We get plenty of fights, a training montage, and an entire third act dedicated to kickboxing revenge in a boat shed, abandoned warehouse, aboard a tram, before seeing the lead villain played by Ned Harani thrown from a third story window. Poor Jim Gaines even gets tied to the tracks and clobbered by a train. Mike Monty is yet again captured in this Return to the Jungle film from 1990, Battle Geese, also called Return to Nowhere. Sergeant Corrance Berry, Sergeant Jim Gaines, Major Richard King and Lieutenant James Gregory are on a mission to Cambodia to rescue Colonel Monty, but meet resistance from his captors. This one is quite grim, with a lot of casualties on the winning side as the film progresses, and shares similarities with his 1988 film, Jungle Rats. It tries its hardest to show us the horrors of war, while still giving us the exploding huts that we signed up to Teddy Page Films for. Battle Geese is a fitting final romp in the jungle for Teddy's career. In 1991's Blood Chase sees Andrew Stevens and Karen Shepard as partnered cops trying to find out if Karen's father, Mike Monty, a robber of a military convoy was really killed in a car explosion or not. Meanwhile, his previous partners, Betrayed, escape from jail and start looking for the money that he kept for himself, starting with Karen Shepard. The story sees the pair go to Costa Brava to find out the truth about her father. Blood Chase has a lot going for it in the action department, with swift martial arts and many to one fights on display like the Hong Kong classics of the 80s. Shepard's style reminds me a lot of Cynthia Rothrock, in fact she starred in her 1986 Hong Kong film Riding Wrongs. Blood Chase is a turning point in Teddy Page's films that sees the director now mostly focused on fight flicks for the rest of his career.
from 1991, Blood Ring, also called Blood Fight 4 on German DVD. Disgraced and drunk kickboxing hustler Dale Apollo Cook finds himself up against a crime syndicate led by Ned Harani, Nick Nicholson, coke sniffing Jim Gaines, and a boss Don Nielsen. His ex girlfriend, played by Andrea Lamarche, asks for help in locating her missing current boyfriend. When they learn that he was killed fighting illegal underground matches for Nielsen, Apollo plots revenge. This film is a good time, with plenty of Van Damme style kickboxing, plus dirty fighting including groin punches and ear biting. The end fight even adds barbed wire to the ropes in the boxing ring for added bloodletting. And it wouldn't be a Teddy Page film without some machine gun action in the woods with added dynamite for exploding turrets. There is also a hilarious campfire sex scene that will have you rolling in the aisles as much as it has Apollo rolling in the grass. Three time world champion, Dale Apollo Cook, leads the action in a non stop kick fighting thriller. Blood Ring. Susan Dalton is desperately looking for her husband, who has been missing for months. Suspicious of foul play, she requests the help of an old friend who was once a lethal kickboxer. I know it. He's in trouble. He's in South America fighting in this big kickboxing tournament. Take the girl. But they soon become involved in an underworld kickboxing syndicate. With drug lords indulging in gambling bouts. Where the boxers fight to the death. Revenge soon explodes in the Blood Ring. Angel in the Dark, also called The Destroyer, on custom DVD, but a German DVD is coming soon. Drunk bum Romano Kristoff intervenes when a prostitute is beaten up by her pimp, but Kristoff gets knocked out cold and nursed back to health by the thankful prostitute and her blind daughter. The next day, drunk Kristoff disturbs armed drug runners mid-deal, but is saved by an eye patch wearing Jim Gaines who turns out to be an undercover cop hunting for a crime boss known as the Snowman. After repeatedly running into each other multiple times that frequently ends up in bar fights, Kristoff and Gaines team up. Kristoff sobers up and trains in a montage for an underground street fight, the winnings he will give to the little blind girl for her eye operation. Gaines, however, wants Kristoff's help to take out the Snowman once and for all. These various plot points may seem disconnected, but this is a very entertaining and often brutal latter-day Teddy Page film. Filled with gritty, violent, urban shootouts with plenty of squibs, down and dirty fighting, grenade launches blowing up buildings, and zip lining rescues to top it all off, put Angel in the Dark at the top of your list. Nineteen-ninety-two's Eternal Fist. It's the post-apocalyptic, water-scarce future. Dale Apollo Cook, with his girlfriend, played by Hong Kong martial artist Cynthia Khan, are scavenging in the dunes when a warlord called Mainframe attacks them, crucifies Apollo, and kills his girlfriend. He is eventually rescued and taken to a commune run by Mike Monty by Cynthia Khan, playing an entirely different, more pacifist role. He recovers and leaves for the town with Khan insisting on following him, but they return back to find that the commune was destroyed by Mainframe's goons, and Mike Monty has been killed. Khan throws away her Bible, trains in the martial arts, and along with Apollo, seeks revenge. 
The film then turns into a series of contest fights with more and more ridiculous opponents and plastic nunchucks before finally taking on Mainframe in the final battle. Jim Gaines has a secondary role as Apollo's friend and gets involved in some of these fights. The whole movie feels very much like Rutger Hauer's The Blood of Heroes, or a Serio Santiago movie like Striker or Bloodfist 2050, and it's the only post-apocalyptic film that Teddy Page made. In the desolate days after the Great Destruction, Earth is a savage land where one has to fight to survive. likely alliance trains to do battle against the odds. Getting better. What took you so long? Eternal Fist. From 1992, Fighting Spirit. Shown here as Karate Tiger 6, but also known as King of the Kickboxers 2. Not the same King of the Kickboxers 2 that's also called American Shaolin. Are you following yet? Sean Donahue is a kickboxer. When he sees his friend Lauren Avedon beaten up by thugs, Sean fights them off. Meanwhile, Greg Douglas and Jim Gaines corner Donahue's sister on her way home and violently rape her. Motorbike riding, Donahue rescues her and takes her to the hospital where she needs an eye operation. Donahue agrees to fight in underground competitions for money to Ned Harani to pay off the surgery, but when he learns he could be killed, he wants out. When Harani and his gang drag Donahue behind a jeep until dead, Lauren Avedon promises he will have revenge to Donahue's sister. This is your standard vengeance movie, with bar fights, bodies thrown in slow motion through windows, countless fights leading up to the battle with the big boss. I didn't expect for Sean Donahue to be killed in the first act, and for Lauren Avedon to take over, but it added extra excitement to the film. Lauren is accomplished in martial arts, and it's a pleasure to see him violently defeat Ned Hurani's goons one by one. They are the best of friends. One is murdered, the other is deceived. To fight truth and justice, we must fight to survive. I'm warning you, David. If you don't stop messing around that guy, you're going to find yourself out of the company. Hey, man, chill out. It's against the law. I'll sue your ass for police brutality. <laughs> Fighting Spirit From 1995 and the last English Teddy Page film, Blood Ring 2. On DVD is Blood Fight 6. Eight months after the events of the first Blood Ring, we see Apollo entering prison for his crimes. The Crooked Warden knows that he is a good fighter and wants Apollo to fight for him in prison, but he refuses. The Warden sends multiple inmates to provoke him into fighting, who he quickly dispatches, but he continually resists the offer. Eventually, with the help of his female lawyer, Apollo escapes and is chased by the Warden's goons through an abandoned factory until captured and finally forced to fight. The film starts with a 7 minute recap from the ending of the first film, and that's not the only use of old footage in Blood Ring 2. The same hilarious sex scene from the first Blood Ring is repeated shot for shot as a dream sequence, as is a training montage when he gazes out the prison window, and a boxing footage as part of a fever dream. Some of the more fun new footage includes Nick Nicholson as the angry prison chef. It seems fitting that the last shot in our final Teddy Page film is that of Apollo blowing up a helicopter with a rocket launcher before the screen fades to black. I'm getting out of here. Find him and bring him back. 
So uh, Teddy had a great run. For someone who had very little confidence in his ability, he sure as hell seems to be having the best time. And uh, apparently, lovely guy, sadly gone around about 2007 uh, in his hometown up in the north of the Philippines. So RIP Teddy and uh, thanks for the um, thousands of exploding hunts.